What's up everyone, I'm Andy, this is Jason. We're at the Philadelphia Barber Company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Today I'm gonna be doing a high and tight skin fade with a little bit of a beard trim. So I'm gonna start with a two up here just to kind of get the bulk down. Um, I wanna start with a good base. So I'm just gonna go all the way around kind of to the crown of his head. I don't want to go in too much. I don't want to cut into his hair. I just want to follow the shape of his head here. So I'm not going in, but rather going kind of up in a way. And I'm going to be coming back around later and fading this in with clipper over comb so we don't miss anything. I'm going to grab my one and a half and go a little bit lower with it and kind of fade it into what I just made with my two. I'm going to start open. Um, one and a half open is basically a two. So just still keeping that base where I want it without doing anything too drastic. But this is a high and tight, so the, the skin fade is going to come up pretty high anyways. But you're just kind of getting the feel of the shape of the head when you do this. I just closed it. And I'm going back over that to tighten it up. I'm also following the uh, growth of his hair. So, you know, if, instead of just coming down like this, you can kind of see, for example, his hair grows kind of sideways like that. So instead of just, you know, going up and getting it, I need to go here at an angle. Okay, so now we have a good base to fade our skin fade into. So I'm going to take my zero, bend the ear down, and I'm going to be following um, his head shape here. You know, his, the, everyone's head kind of bulges out a little bit more right here. That's just how the skull is shaped. So you like to start at the temple, kind of go around. I'm going to be fading his beard in as well, um, but I don't want to bring this line down too low because we like to keep his beard nice and full. Bananas! Always sanitize your comb after you drop it. So anyways, I'm going to be fading down his beard later, but I like to keep his beard nice and full um, and not go in too tight. I'm not going to, you know, be fading it all the way down here. So I don't want to bring my zero line too low. And I just opened it um, so I can make that fading process a little bit easier for me when I get there. Now I'm going to continue all the way around. Now when I do skin fades, I like to do one side and then instead of, you know, coming back all the way around, I go to the other side so I can look in the mirror and see, you know, how high I went up and I can look here and match that exactly. And then we'll come back around and even it up in the back. So we got to the back. This is pretty even. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to take it in the middle. I'm looking for his bone back here. I'm going to go above the bone. Um, the bone that's on the back of his head, his isn't that bad at all, but if you keep the fade either, you know, if you, if you keep the fade too low or really low, it's, it works out because you don't have to fade too much on that bone. Um, and if you take it higher, you also don't have to fade on that bone. But if you put your fade line right on the back of their head, sometimes it gets a little tricky to fade, um, on, on the back of their head where that bulge is out there. So I took it a, a little bit higher than that part of the head. So now that I have the guideline for the skin fade, um, this isn't as clean as I want it to be. So I'm gonna be taking my trimmer and cleaning this. I'm also going to be taking um, my foil shaver, box razor, whatever you want to call it, um, and making that super smooth so it's extra clean. Be sure to not go too high with this either. You don't want to ruin the line that you just made because this is, you know, shorter than, than the zero on the clippers. You can just kind of flick up so you don't create too harsh of a line, you know, you don't, I don't like going like this. Some people like to do that, but then it just creates more work for you to fade in 
uh, that that line. But if you come around and get it close and flick up as you're doing it, then you're fading and not creating more work for yourself. Pin fades are a little bit more tedious just because you have to get it so clean. But it is worth it in the end because they look great and clean. Clean. I'll keep saying the word clean. How about that? Clean. Clean. So now I'm going to bring around the foil shaver. Um, with the foil shaver, you need to make sure that you got down to a really short level here. If the hair is too long, this isn't going to catch. So that's why I like to take it down with the trimmer first. Just be aware of that. So this thing always like sounds like a lawnmower, so I always have to ask and make sure it feels okay on their skin. I'm keeping the box shaver pretty low, foil shaver, whatever you want to call it. Um, I want this to be, you know, it's going to be a high and tight skin fade, but it's going to gradually become closer and closer as you get to the bottom. I'm going to be cleaning this with a straight razor though, so if you see all those little fuzzies, I'm going to be there. I'm going to get to them. So I have my clipper open, no guard, and I'm going to make another guideline now. About half an inch above that guideline that I made initially with my zero. And as I get to the line that I want, I'm still flicking up a little bit because I also want to prepare myself for the next step in the fade. and not make any harsh lines that are hard to fade out. So again, I do that side, and then I turn them around, do the same thing on this side. I'm painting you like one of my French girls. Keep it clean. <laughs> uh, so, I didn't tell you what my step was, I'm sorry. So I was starting open, right? And now I close it halfway, and I'm fading in this line. I just got so involved in your hair, just captured my attention, sorry. So I'm fading in this line, flicking up because I don't want to keep bringing the fade higher and higher and higher. I wanna utilize the, the guidelines that I created for myself and have the clipper just open enough, just closed enough where I'm in the middle of this guideline and that first guideline. I'm kind of playing with my lever a bit. You know, if I'm, if I have it say right here, and it's not fading in like that little bit right there. I'll just close it a little bit and use my corner and see if that gets it to where I want it to be. And if I do close it a little bit more, I make sure to keep you know, where the blade is lower. So I'm not closing it a little bit more and then bringing it all the way up here to fade it in or else you're just gonna keep bringing it up and up. And then if I open it all the way, just to go over it again, then I'm going up to that line. And you just kind of have to get a feel for it and see where the dark, dark spots, oops. I can't say that, I did that last time. Dark spots, where the dark spots are and figure out what level, level on the clipper works for those spots. And for me, the fading without the guard on was the most challenging and is still the most tedious part of a skin fade for me. But once we put our one guard on, which we're about to do in a second, it is smooth sailing. One is on, clipper is open. So if you remember, this was our one and a half. This is kind of a two up here, but I, I made our baseline with the one and a half. So one, open is a sh little bit shorter than a one and a half, but not by much. So we're gonna start there. And we're slowly starting to fade this line in. Again, go with the way his hair is growing. So that's why you see me going this way, not up. I wanna catch all the hairs evenly. I'm gonna close it to have my full one and go back around. I'm not gonna go as high as I was with that one open. Okay, 
We still have a little bit of a line here. <sighs> Again. Again, the dryer got us. Um, we still have a little bit of a line here. So I'm going to take the half, open it, which is a little bit shorter than a one. Same exact deal as we did with that one guard, opened it a little bit shorter than a one and a half. Go up, keep it a little bit lower because you don't want to keep bringing it up and up and up. Now I'm going to close it to have the full half. I'm going to be really careful here because this is basically the last part of the fade that we need in order to get this line out. So I don't want to just go all the way up with it. Kind of delicately get that line out. I just opened it again just to make sure that I'm not going to go too high with the half. Closed, full half. Open it just to be sure. I open it and if it doesn't take, then you just close it a little bit more. You can use your corner if you see any dark spots, but you don't want to go with the full line of it. I'm always checking it in the mirror as well. The mirror never lies. And will always show you the dark spots that you've missed. But I'm pretty happy with this. So we still need to blend this in and I still want to trim the top of his hair. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my comb and my clipper without any guard on it. And this was the corner, this is the corner that I want to fade it. So I'm going to just kind of take, scoop it out. This comb, the position of it, is going straight up and down from his head. You know, if you take it and just go straight up. The cowlick part gets a little tricky, but if they had a good haircut before, then the cowlick shouldn't be too out of place. I like to keep the top part of his cowlick long so it can go in with the rest of his hair, but then I fade in the bottom part with the rest of the fade because that grows down anyways, and if it grows out, it's not gonna get too frilly or weird. It's gonna grow out with the rest of his hair. If this was a lower fade, then I wouldn't be cutting the bottom part as short, I would be keeping it long with the rest of it, but because this is a high skin fade, I'm gonna actually get that with my shears because I don't want the clipper to go in too much and ruin the work that I've done there. So I'm grabbing these hairs by putting my comb in and bringing it out. Kind of grabs them and makes it easier for you to get it with the clipper without cutting into their hair. Okay, so there's still a little bit of a ridge right here. I'm gonna come back around with my scissors also but for now, I just kind of want to make sure that that's, I get as much as I can with the clippers. And by going like this, it's just a little bit more effective in getting that corner off. And when I look in the mirror, I don't want to see, you know, a big ridge coming out here. I want to make sure that it's flush to his head and framing his face properly. But I will come back to that for the millionth time. So I'm going to wet his hair because I'm going to start with my sheer work. I really like the length in the front of his hair. I want to texturize it a little bit, but it's really long back here for his hairstyle anyways. Uh, so I'm going to be taking about an inch off from the back of the top of his head and make my first section. That's it's a little long. Um, you said it was bothering you a little bit too, right? It was a little yeah. bit hard to style. Yeah. But if you go too short here, then it's going to stick up and they can't really do anything with it. So I'm going to start with about an inch. Or maybe like an inch and a half. And here I will kind of hold it out to an angle because I want it to look a little bit more blended over here rather than kind of just a undercut up to the side. And I'm just going to work my way through and take about that much off. But as I work my way to the front, I'm going to start taking less and less because I don't want to take that much off the front. So gradually I'll start taking less here so this can remain. 
If you were to be cutting the hair at an even length, you would make your guideline and keep following that guideline. But since the front's going to be a little bit longer, that doesn't apply as much. But we'll still be cross-checking it to make sure that the graduation is achieved properly. So I just want to cut the, the edges off here to get the dead ends off. And then I'm going to texturize it. So hold it straight up. Take the points of your scissors and just kind of cut into it. You can gain some speed the more you get used to doing this, but you know, if it takes a little bit of time to, to get that, you just you can go slowly. Don't chop into your finger. We've all done it, but it's, it sucks. So be careful. So I want to cross-check this, make sure that the front is indeed longer than the back. There's just like a little couple ridges that I'm evening up. Nothing too crazy. This corner is also an issue for some people. Sometimes, you know, it sticks out and they don't know what to do. I like to just go with the hair pattern. So his pattern goes around like this. And I'm going to make it flush with the head here because I'm going to be blending in this as well. But it's also kind of nice to leave it a little bit long so it has room to, to sit back with these hairs. And this was that ridge that I was coming around with the clipper over comb, but I didn't want to cut in too much with the clipper. And you can get more detailed work by just taking these little edges off. And I'll probably texturize it a little bit more um, after I blow dry it. I want to see how it looks dry first. And back to this cowlick area that I said I was going to come back with shears. See this like little tail? I don't want that there. But I want these here because those belong with the rest of his hair. This can be with the fade. Just take your comb, get in there, get your shears in there. Same with this side. I don't want to give him a full undercut or anything, but I also don't want it to look messy up at the crown of his head. I don't like to do any strict lineups on the forehead, but sometimes it looks a little, you know, not clean there. So I'll just take my shears and get those frills. Sometimes if you hold the long hair back too, you can kind of see any messy pieces. And I'll just go around with my shears and, and snip those off. So I'm not going to blow dry his hair yet. I want to move on to the beard. Uh, after I blow dry his hair, I'm going to make sure that that blend is all good but I want to clean up his face. Okay, so I'm going to start um, with a three going down with the grain of his hair. Um, I'm just going to be, you can see it's a little too much right here. I wanted to frame his face. His cheekbones are here and I want to bring it down, but not in. I don't want to, you know, I want to bring it in too much because his beard is nice and full and then I'll just be cleaning up the length that he already has. This is a three. And I'm just going down. If his beard was a little straighter and not as fluffy, um, I would probably be using, using mainly shears right here, my scissors. Um, but since his beard gets so fluffed out, you kind of have to shape it. I'm going to grab a two and do the same thing, but not go down as far. Because now we're just going to be fading this area in. And then the rest I can do with my trimmer and just my comb. And I'm, I'm bringing this part of the comb out more. It's not like flush with his head or else you're going to put a big hole in his beard. Um, and you don't do that on beard brand. So 
Sometimes it gets a little tricky right here because the ears are in the way of the comb, but you can kind of push on the ear. It doesn't hurt you, right? No. You're fine. He's okay. Now I want to clean up this area a little bit more. Just follow the hairline. I don't want to bring the line in too much, but this goes out a little bit. So I just want to clean up those hairs that kind of are growing close to his ear. And bring a straight line down. And since I'm already on this side and I have the trimmer in my hand, I'm going to clean up his lines here. Flip the trimmer over. I'll come back around with the straight razor here at the end. To kind of clean up these lines. I just don't want to get too close to his beard and bring his lines too low because we have them at a good spot right now. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And now, so you saw that my comb out like this on the other side. Since we're on the opposite side of his face now, same motion, it's just the tip of the comb is up here. So, see, still out. Love that train. Good old Philadelphia. Clean up the cheeks again. That's all I really want to do for the mustache. Just make sure it's even. I have a long hair here. Now I just want to shape his beard. I don't want to take much length off. I just want to make sure it's clean. Get the frizzies off. I want to look at him head on for this just so I can see the side, what's sticking out, what I need to cut. And same on this side. And I just want to trim what's not neat and tidy down here. Down a little bit, yeah. Got a little unruly in the back underneath, so I just wanna kinda get that out. And then follow the shape of his jawline, you know, but without going up to his jawline. You're creating a face shape almost. Someone's loving your beard. I was going to say, they just saw your beard. Loving it. So his beard breaks a little bit right here, naturally. Um, and I don't want to bring it up too much because he has such a great full beard right now. But that's totally normal. You know, not everything is always symmetrical or even naturally. Um, but we can kind of let it all come together and, and trim it accordingly. As long as it's the same shape, everything's fine. If he wanted to make it look more full and even, we would probably bring his beard line up to about here, but he likes to have a long, full beard, so we're not gonna do that. But if that is ever an issue for anyone and they, they don't like that their beard breaks in a certain area, then you bring up the full beard to right above where it starts to break and then bring it in a little bit more and shape it to that. So now we're gonna blow dry his hair Make sure it's all blended in properly here how I want it to be. I'm going to thin out the back just a little tiny bit and then I'll, I'll clean him up back here at the straight razor and the cheeks as well. So I just blow dried his hair. All I really want to do is just blend this in a little bit more and take some thickness out of the back. So I'm going to take my texturizing shears and just get in these corners a little bit more. Just so it's a little bit more of a seamless blend. I don't want to take too much out of this cowlick. I don't want it to pop up. And it's a little thick back here, so I just want to take these and go into it like that. 
Now that's not as puffy, doesn't have as much volume, because we want the volume to be in the front. And I'm pretty happy with this how, with how this looks on this side as well. So we don't really need to do much. I'm just going over this for good measure. So all that's really left to do, all there's really left to do is uh, shave back here and shave his cheeks. Do you see anything? Else, anything any oh my God, I'm so tired. Great. Thank you, God. <laughs> <Hello>. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Okay, let's do it. Let's clean your neck up, clean your cheeks up. All right, so I'm just cleaning up his neck with the straight razor. Getting these hairs. Just so they don't pop out of his shirt. I also kind of want to just get this corner here because it comes in. He has sensitive skin, so I don't want to go down too far and give him any razor burn. Make sure you're stretching the skin nice and tight so the razor doesn't catch on the skin or anything. Now I also want to get his cheeks and just make sure that that line is nice and tight. You have been faded, you have been beard trimmed, you have been somewhat shaved. I'm not putting any hair product in his hair or anything. It's pretty late here in Philadelphia and it's bedtime. So we don't want to put anything in there. All right, feel good? It's awesome, thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs>Often copied, often imitated, often compared to, it is the pinnacle beard oil in the market. Head over to beardbrand.com and invest in your beard, invest in yourself, and keep on growing.